What's up, YouTube? This is Big Mike. Um, I haven't really been recording much, and I guess most of you guys have noticed that by now. And to be honest with you, man, I kind of have been contemplating retiring from making videos. Um, there's so many more voices out there now, and uh, it's a far different landscape than when I first started doing videos six years ago. And I find myself just wanting to listen to videos uh, and comment, but oftentimes, I don't know, man. Sometimes I just don't even feel like making videos. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but I had a couple of subscribers leave some comments recently as far as videos and were saying they want my take on certain things. So, you know, I guess I owe it to my subscribers to keep making videos but I don't know sometimes I just sometimes I think I'm a better listener than I am actually a talker but Kyrie Irving we all know that it's been revealed that he's requested a trade from Cleveland to another team uh, some of the teams that I have seen uh, one of the teams I've seen was the Minnesota Timberwolves I think some other teams possibly may have been the Spurs or uh, some teams like that. I've, I've heard the Knicks. Whatever. This is my take on this. All right? Let me address something that, of course, bothers me because I hate fanboys, as you all know. Let me... Say something to you extreme LeBron fans, okay? I've noticed, I've read some of you guys' comments on other videos and things of that nature. And it's funny how when many, many NBA fans criticize LeBron James for his decision in 2010, you justified it by saying, LeBron James is free to play for whomever he wants to. Whoever he wants to. All right? He's given his heart and soul to Cleveland. He doesn't feel that he can win with that team. Those teams that he uh, had in 2008, 9, and 10, he didn't feel like he could win. So LeBron should be able to play for whoever he wants to. Now, at the time, I didn't agree with it. I thought it was cowardly to do. We hadn't seen that in the NBA, right? A guy kind of just pulling a Richard Nixon and just quitting, <laughs> you know, on his team. But over time, I've come to accept the current NBA generation for what it is. It's different. The culture is different. All right? But you same guys, however, don't give Kyrie Irving the same leeway. You'll say how disloyal it is for Kyrie to quit on LeBron. How disrespectful and ungrateful he is to want to leave that team. How could he do this to LeBron? Once again, you make it about LeBron. You fucking wretched, filthy fanboys. I fucking despise you motherfuckers. Fucking hypocrites. But with Kyrie, why doesn't he also get the benefit of the doubt. Why is it that he can't go to a team that he feels is a contender? Because we all know Clinton really make any moves this offseason. He sees what these other teams have done. And he doesn't feel that Cleveland has the type of talent now that could win a title. Okay. Obviously, that's part of it. Now, as far as other reasons why he wants to leave... It would be pure speculation on my part because I don't really know. We don't really, really know. Okay? But I can take a guess. Number one, 
he might be tired of playing in LeBron James' shadow. For one. Kyrie Irving was the one who hit the game when he shot in Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals. Of course LeBron James was huge in those last few games. But people forget that Kyrie Irving, in those last three, hmm, three to four ball games of that series, definitely last three, severely outplayed Stephen Curry. I mean, he was dropping, what, 39 points, 41 points, 42 points, looking like Isaiah Thomas on steroids out there. There were times when they were trying to put double teams on Kyrie Irving. You know what I'm saying? They were, uh, you had Andre Iguodala. Sometimes I think even when when Kyrie was going to the post, so, well, you know, trying to penetrate the post, they even had Draymond Green helping out on defense, and they couldn't stop the guy when he was on the roll like that. <clears throat> but at the same time, all I hear is LeBron, 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 LeBron. That has to get on his nerves. Not to mention the fact that I remember when Cleveland was going on their shit, really half season long slump. I mean, they're kind of a gangbusters to start the season, if I remember correctly, but for the last half of the season, they were pretty lackadaisical. I mean, they, they finished with, what, the second or third best record in the Eastern Conference, but they were the second best. But really, they played 500 basketball for the most part after, I think, January 1st, right? But what I remember was whenever they lost, they tend to blame Kyrie Irving. Kyrie needs to step up offensively. Kyrie needs to shoot the ball better. Kyrie needs to be more, uh, needs to play defense. Kyrie needs to do this. Kyrie needs to do that. LeBron even called out Kyrie one time, saying Kyrie needs to step up. Now, one thing I remember about Michael Jordan. Yes, the earlier incarnation of Jordan was a bastard to play with. You know, he drove teammates out of their fucking minds, all right? He got on Bill Cartwright's nerve. and Bill Cartwright got along with everybody, all right? He drove guys like Brad Sellers out of the league. He, you know, uh, always got into a horse grant. He was horrible at times with Scottie Pippen. But that also helped to drive, to drive Scottie Pippen to become the player that he became. Now, when Jordan left and came back, Jordan probably also realizing that his skills had diminished and that he actually needed his teammates now uh, to win championship, though he never would admit it. Probably that was part of the equation. I could give that consideration. But Jordan more or less looked at Scottie Pippen as an equal partner. Whenever, I remember the second three-peat, whenever the Bulls would win and Jordan might score 40 or 50 points or whatever, he would immediately try to deflect it and by bringing up other teammates. He would bring up Dennis Rodman getting 15 rebounds and playing excellent post-defense. He would bring up Scottie Pippen's excellent perimeter defense and whatever stat line he had and how they wouldn't have won without Scottie Pippen's help, without the bench help. He always had a tendency to, the older Jordan had a tendency to defer to his team. And by doing that, that made the team, not even just Pippen, but lesser players, feel appreciated and that contributed to the relatively positive chemistry with the Chicago Bulls. Their bench, I mean, excuse me, their, their squad had a pretty positive uh, chemistry about them, okay? Were they like best of friends? No. But they respect each other. LeBron James, on the other hand, in my opinion, is a prima donna who tends to be focused primarily on himself. And I don't blame Kyrie Irving one, one bit for doing what he did because LeBron James does it constantly, all right? 
Dan Gilbert bent over backwards to try to create the team that LeBron James wanted to create. Dan Gilbert and other uh, persons in the management did not want to sign uh, J.R. Smith to that contract, but LeBron James was adamant about it. I want J.R. Smith for my team. Give Tristan Thompson that big contract. He deserves it. Now, when you don't have the money to sign up the other guys because you got all these guys, these big contracts, guess whose fault it is, LeBron? It's yours. So stop fucking crying about you still need to get this, that we need to get that, and we need this, or if I'm not playing, if I, if I don't get this, I'm going to leave. But if, the thing about it, why should Dan Gilbert spend all this money to please the player that he's not even going to show that's going to be playing after the next season for his team? Because LeBron James doesn't want to commit past last season, uh, next season. So you got all this going on. Who blames Kyrie Irving? No. What it is, Kyrie Irving is, is entering his prime now. LeBron James is past his prime. Kyrie Irving is entering his prime years now. Kyrie Irving doesn't want to get stuck like Dwayne Wade did. You know, uh, one year you're winning titles. LeBron James sees the situation for what it is, and he probably also sees the writing on the wall. LeBron James isn't going to return after next year. He knows something that we don't know. That's how I look at it. Kyrie knows some stuff that we don't know. I'm speculating that he's heard it through various sources that LeBron James is probably not going to return after next season. You think Kyrie is going to stand on a team that's going to win, that's going to be a 500 team, right? You think Kyrie Irving doesn't recognize that there's all these other guys out there who are premier perimeter players and get all the accolades like a Stephen Curry, like a Russell Westbrook, you know what I mean, like a James Harden, like a, to a slightly lesser extent, Damian Lillard. And he's a better one-on-one player than all of them. Not saying he's a better overall player, but he's a better one-on-one offensive player than all of them. He's tired of living in the shadow of LeBron James. He has a championship. I also don't believe that he was on any any um, All NBA teams this past year, <coughs> which probably was an insult to him. And a lot of those times, those tif- those types of situations have a, a negative impact or effect on your se- on your uh, contracts because a lot of times you get little bonuses for being on those types of things. Um. Yeah, he probably feels slighted. And the last little theory that I have is possible that he may have caught wind that LeBron may have asked for Kyrie's name, to, you know, as far as trades is concerned. And you look at Kyrie Irving, and this guy's a stud, okay? This is a guy who's been your go-to shot maker, all right? Every guy, everybody has to remember that that regular season game, I think it was Christmas, Kyrie Irving hit the game winner in that shot. So this guy's a killer. I mean, unlike LeBron, there's no question in my mind that when the game is online, win or lose, miss or make, Kyrie's going to take that shot. Player that I like to root, I would like to root for. And also, I've read that um, this isn't just recent. Kyrie has asked for a trade all the way back to early June or mid June. And that um, he wanted to play with Jimmy Butler. And when Jimmy Butler was not acquired by the Cavaliers, and subsequently when Cleveland fired their general manager, that was the final straw. I read that he was kind of close with his general manager. And I read that one of the teams that he wants to play for is the Minnesota Timberwolves. So, we'll see. We'll see what's going on with that one, man. Um, I'll say this. I've read that uh, Cleveland has signed, or they're very close to signing, Derrick Rose. They're not going to win the title of Derrick Rose, all right? 
Cleveland's not going to win a championship next year, guys. I mean, that's just how that's going to go. And without Kyrie Irving, it's a strong possibility they might not even make it to the finals. I mean, that's that's just how big an impact Kyrie Irving has on that team. And without him, they're not even going to go to the NBA Finals. Without him, LeBron James at this stage of his career, it's not. And yes, uh, who is that subscriber? Is it Vargas? The guy who, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Vargas. I think it's Vargas. You're always saying that, how do I feel, why do I feel like the 2007 version of LeBron is better than the 2017 version? Well, number one, he was more athletic. Uh, he could demand more of himself physically. Uh, he could play 42, 43, 44, 45 minutes of a game without it uh, affecting him in the long term. He was more explosive. Um, I think he was also, in my opinion at least, mentally stronger back then. Because remember him, oftentimes in the stretch of ball games, taking over games. You know, was it always with a jump shot? Not always. But a lot of times it was dribble drive penetration. Um, scoring, uh, either scoring, dunking, or getting and ones, or taking it, or going to the foul line. Whereas LeBron James now, he's never developed a consistent outside shot. He can't take it to the basket as much as he used to. He can't get up as high as he used to. Now the, the numbers look good because he's playing with on a team. You know, what I'm saying with with a stretch four and all these different offensive players. So, yes, his assists are higher. His rebounds are a little bit higher, just a little bit. But you got to remember, okay, LeBron might he might be putting up like 27, 9, and 9 now, but on a team that was far less talented back in the late 2000s, he was putting up 37 and 8 or 37 and 7 and a half when the best player he was playing with was freaking Mo Williams. So, you put that LeBron James in 2007 and you put the talent around him now, they would probably go to the finals every year and they probably would, outside of the Golden State Warriors, any other team, they'd win a title. In my opinion, LeBron James, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, far better. Well, not far better, but significantly better than LeBron James now. I think LeBron James has been declining as a player since about 2014, 2015. I think he's slowly been declining since then. But that's just me. Tell me what you guys think about whatever I talked about in this video today.